Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition. I'm your host, Colors Fade. This is episode 9. We are in Amadia's Sanctuary. A young man in oversized armor paces around a table covered with a spread of maps. His face a tight scowl of frustration. Every approach blocked. Oh, damn it. What good are battle tactics against those things anyway? He glances up. In quick succession, he becomes aware of both your presence and the fact that you're not a familiar face. Who the blazes are you? Introduce yourself. He funds the name. Ifan, eh? On the run from Fort Joy, are you? A seeker can always recognize a sorcerer when they see one. Pause, then say you met an elf named Verdus in Fort Joy's dungeons who mentioned a group who might seek you out. You met Verdus? Oh, then he's as good as dead. We're the seekers he spoke of. We were supposed to free him. Instead, we failed him. Mention that Verdus seemed to recognize you as the same as him. Does he know what that might mean? You? A godwoken? Surely not. Though if Verda said so, you could be important. But there's no way to be certain until we've left this blasted island behind us. Say that you're fine with that. The sooner you can leave this place behind, the better. The young man anxiously fidgets with his curved bow. You found a matter close to his heart, evidently. That's, that's easier said than done, I'm afraid. Much easier said. Yet the Magisters have us cornered. They have these weapons called Shriekers. If we try to go against them unprepared, we're dead. We've lost many already. So there must be a way to overcome these things. Nothing's invincible, after all. There's weapons. Ancient devices that can counter those things. Our leader, Sir Gareth, set out to find them so we could break the Magister blockade and escape this island. But he hasn't returned. If Sir Gareth doesn't come back with those weapons in tow, well, this island will be our grave. Say that you look for Gareth and these weapons, if that's what it takes to get off this island. You'll, you'll help us. His shoulders visibly relax, the weighty armor upon them settling with a clink. Thank you. Allies are in short supply in this place. If you help us, I promise we'll get you as far away from this place as possible. Before I bid him a do, I'm going to look. He has polymorph spells. And these spells. Great. Okay. I'm going to want some of these for my man. Let's see, what kind of wares do I have? Only 119 with uh, wares to give away. Smoke and screams. Echoes of death. Sir Gareth. She's not going to help us. Before you stands a figure, her body wreathed in cloth. All you can see of her eyes are two dark holes in an ornate mask. Armadia's blessings, child. I have not seen this face in our sanctuary before. Pray, who are you? Tell her you're just a man trying to get by in a world determined not to live. As are so many. I pray you will be comfortable here. I am Gratiana, priestess of Armadia. It is a privilege to welcome you to her sanctuary from Bracus's vile swamps. The swamp looks utterly godforsaken. I wonder why there's a shrine in such a pretty place. It was not always thus. This swamp was once a rich, lush land before he came. Before so, Bracus. Sounds like a long time ago. I wonder how long she's lived here. I have been here for many years. It has given me a lot of time to reflect on the past and learn from it. In truth, the torments of Gracchus and of these Magisters were not so different. Both purged source from this land. Indeed, the Magisters have even taken Gracchus's worst tools. First, the purging ones, and now those shriekers, 
Without something more powerful than these sticks the Seekers are armed with, those crucified monstrosities will kill them to a man. Ask where their leader is now. The fool ran into the swamps. He pestered me for aid against the Shriekers, and when I finally told him of a cache of Bracus's soul-forged weapons, he rushed away to find it. A bold move, but ill-advised. Unless he returns with weapons enough, I fear none of these Seekers will leave this island with air in their lungs. Hmm. Interesting. wonder if you could get directions to this secret cache of weapons. Gladly. But I fear you'll fare no better than the Seeker. North of here you'll find the ruins of Gracchus's source armory. Nothing in this land can counter the Shrieker's power like those weapons. Without them, the Seekers are truly hopeless. Promise her you'll do everything you can to find them. Walk ever in Armadia's grace, child. She has Aerothurge, <laughs> Tactical Retreat, which back. I want. Worm Tremor, which we're gonna need. That's gonna be important. Right, she's got stuff, and we have Bouncing Shield. Which I'm actually gonna memorize right now. While I'm still using a shield, I'll make use of that. That'll change quickly. Oh, what is this? What's this bag? Bleed fire. Hmm. It's not. This is not a terribly useful skill. I think I should save it for selling. I don't actually end up using it. The birds are asleep. The moon's in the sky. Restoration. I don't have any of the hydrosurfaces. Please, Armada. He doesn't have any hydro from the ring yet. I need to deceive it. I'm going to hang on to that in case somebody does get it. How much money do I have again? Not enough to really buy anything. I'm going to get some Amidst cash. Amidst the placid little pond, the face of a goddess lies half submerged in the water. Rivulets stream from her deep-set eyes like endless cascades of sunlit tears. You feel peaceful in her presence, soothed somehow by an intangible comfort. Savor the moment and take your time to look over the statue. As you gaze upon her loving face, you find yourself drawn into a trance-like state. A voice seems to reach you from within your mind and from the furthest reaches of the stars. Its whispers caress you like a breeze. Listen intently. Expose yourself to this unearthly voice. The voice grows stronger, like a breeze picking up. What were whispers become words. My children. My children. Gone are my children. Dead are they in the cradle I have ruled. Commiserate with her plight. Few fates are worse than hers. A feeling of indescribable sadness assails you. It feels like your heart merges with the spirits, torn together by a coil of thorns. My child, my child, weep with me for the mother who has lost. Weep with me and bathe in the tears of Amadia. Keep your own sorrows quiet, but let her grief overcome you and weep for her children. Your tears mingle with those of the goddess down in the tranquil crystalline pond. As suddenly as it came, the voice is gone, and you wake from its presence as if from dream-filled slumber. The pond now shines with an inner light, and standing in its waters, you feel rejuvenated, pure, as if born anew. Blessings upon the And now it's a healing pool. Echoes of death. Which is great for everybody except uh, our boy here, Fane the Undead. One of these characters. He said he's so nice. They even knew that much. But still. You're alive! Wasn't sure you would it's, be. Oh, he sells Pyro. This Fireball. is the one I told I you about. That. It's 418. Spawn and Supernova, which is fantastic. Alright, so the kid sells those. The disheveled lizard eyes you with hope, though her hope is tinged with mistrust. Han tells me you helped him out of Fort Joy. For that, you have my thanks. <laughs> wonder if she's thankful enough to throw a little reward your way. Samadel presses her lips together, 
Disbelief and indignation shine from the narrowed eyes she trains on you. For shame. The shame of Damien upon you. The survival of a child should be reward enough. The survival of Rivalon itself should we seekers be successful. Oh, and she has... Oh, it's her who's got him. Okay. Raise an eyebrow and hold out your palm. The lizard blinks her eyes rapidly. She says not another word to you, but turns her back and addresses Han once more. No, Han. Let's take a look at your nasty leg injury. Catch you later, Skipper. It, it's good you're here. Oh. That didn't quite go the way I wanted it to. Hold on. A grim-faced man sifts through a pile of badly damaged weapons, salvaging the repairable, ditching the broken. He picks up a rapier, the blade nicked and splintered, the hilt twisted. Oh, he's got necro spells. Well, that's uh, that's definitely something I want. Is the power infusion skill book? Okay, yeah, let's take a look at some stuff here. Ifan, note the broken rapier. Thirteen years bad luck for the welder. Wielder, ask if it says. He holds the damaged blade up to the light. This was Halon's blade. It was his first. It was also his last. He didn't intend to die here, but die here he did. He was an ordinary soul with an extraordinary heart, Halon, and he died for what he believed. Take the right here. Note the bend near the point of the blade. Raise the sword and bring it down flat and hard on the edge of the table. The point breaks away, leaving a jagged edge. The sword is shorter now, but it'll do more damage. And the rapier right back. Who are you? Tell him you're Ifan Ben Mazd of the Lone Wolves, and you won't be broken. He realizes, to his surprise, that he holds the weapon in his hand, ready for battle. He smiles to himself, tucks the weapon away, and gets back to work. Alright. And prescribes the humble warfare service spells because of death. Gareth, please come back. By Armadia's grace, what did you do? Oh, yeah, she's got worm trimmer and she's got all the air stuff. Okay. Tell her the statue spoke to you. And then there was mist everywhere. This is incredible. In all my years, I've never seen the goddess bestow her blessing on someone. I am humbled to be in your presence. Explain that you're honored to have seen the goddess's favor. Truly, we are blessed to know you. If Armadia favors you, that is all I need to know. A dwarf stands by a young woman. He seems intensely focused on her, whispering and singing softly in her ear. She's staring blankly into space. Blood and bone. Fire and smoke. Death and... and work. Hush now, Leia. They'll not hurt you again. You're safe now. Once Gareth gets back, we're going home. You'll see. He'll be fine. The woman rubs her neck, raking her nails across her skin as she whimpers. Wonder why she's so upset. The dwarf starts at the sound of your voice, gripping the woman's arm for a moment before he relaxes. New faces. Hope you aren't bushwhacked by the Magisters too. This one's seen a lot today. She were in the middle of it all when the Magisters unleashed their shriekers. Howling dogs and men. Friends silently screaming through stitched mouths. He puts his arm around her as she starts to sob. She's delicate at the best of times. I asked Simone for something to help her relax, but Gareth's the only one who truly keeps her calm. If we didn't need her to remove Erdos' collar, she'd be safe somewhere far from here. And now the rescue's scuppered. <sighs> it were all for nothing. Ask why Gareth is so important to her. We were part of the caravan headed to Fort Joy. Shiny collars and all. Gareth and the Seekers ambushed the caravan and freed us. Saved every one of us from that hell. But now he's off searching for weapons to take down them shriekers. And all we can do is sit here, thinking about the god woken we didn't save. You've heard that term before. Ask what exactly he means by god woken. From fragments to whole. From their past to our future. From their hope to ours. She ain't detailed, but she ain't wrong. The god woken there are hope that a new divine can be born. Someone to replace Lucian and push back the void woken. Someone to restore order and protect the source. I'd speak to Exter if you want to know more. Hmm. Okay. 
The dwarf nods at you before turning back to Leia. He starts to sing quietly to her. Alright. I think Gareth actually has the warfare spell, so. The goddess's tears still stream freely, but an aura of loving calm now permeates the soft, moist air. Fort Joy Dungeons, baby. Alright. Time to get to business. Time to get busy living or dying. First thing I want to do is get the mask because there's a bunch of good skills for Fane to acquire when he can put the mask on. And I know exactly where that mask is too. Um, and it's not from this guy, but that's okay. Alright, there's a couple things in here. This is a neat little spot. There's a couple of good fights in here. Baddies? Holy hellhounds. Those dogs sound out for blood. Oh. Oh, he's gonna get a chance to use the red ball. Well, Fane, what do you got? You got the bow? Okay. Source hounds, they've oh this one's got low armor, but I can't see it. Alright. In that case. I'm gonna try to fight these guys kinda like one at a time out here. That this guy will run down. Okay. Oh. Ethan Ben Mast. Uh, oh yeah, summon the cat familiar. That'll be fun. Oh. Can I hit that guy? Yeah, I can. No like. Oh, come on, hit him. Stupid cat. Hello? Losa. Oh, now is right about now. I'm gonna delay her turn because what I'd really like to do is get some fire. Sight. Yeah, because I moved. Can I get in this room? I can't really get where. Oh, I can't get there. Okay, hold on. Doggy dart. There we go. 
cat's getting hurt. Close. Let's take a turn off of you. So let's make you wait. This can't be it. You can get in here now. Let's see. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, I like that. Town. Potion up here. Minor healing potion. Oh, and there's this. Seven, darling bow, six, seven, all right. Oh, wait a minute. Is that bow better than what he's got right now? Ten to twelve, yeah. Okay. Oh, and you can wear something now because you have. Yeah. Well, let's see what lucky charm and intelligence or wits and poison resistance. I'm going to have him wear that for now. 18, 12. Gives her a little more protection. Right. My tummy hurts. <laughs> this dog cracks me up. Experience under lock and key. Oh, I think there's a key around here, though. This I don't think I can't be it. There it is. Good find. Read this. Yay, new recipe. These books are only worth five gold, but I take them and add them to my wares, anyways. Hello. I like people to wear helmets, but I don't like them to show up. I'm so glad that they made this an option. Any good books up here? Journal. Magister. My tummy hurts. I don't think, so. I don't think you need that. She's full. Oh yeah, Hound's Master's Crossbow. Lucky nice. find. Scroll. Alright, let's oh and an empty cup. Let's talk to this dog. You let me free. What if what if I'm dangerous? What if I hurt somebody? What if I hurt you? Ask what the magisters have done to him. They fed me. Horrible things. Meat. From... from people. I didn't want to eat it. 
but they do something to it that makes it irresistible. Even you, the one who saved me, I can picture sinking my teeth into you, ripping the flesh apart, swallowing it down. Offer the dog your hand and say it isn't his fault. He's been caught by horrible people, just like you have. A low growl. The dog starts to salivate and lick his chops. His eyes go hard and cold. Suddenly, he seems to remember himself and whines. This is... this is awful. I can't go back into the world like this. Please, just put me down. I won't be party to this. It's suicide. Fine. This poor pooch deserves a little peace. This is not justice. Birdie does not deserve to die. Oh, let's see. It's the compassionate thing to do. We'll end his misery. Close your eyes, little doggy. Hurry! Hurry! I don't want to lose myself! Even now I can smell you! Even now I'm thinking about it! About horrible things! Birdie bows his head. You raise your weapon. Thank you! Oh, poor Birdie. I don't know what happens if you let him loose, though. I'm not sure I want to know. Alright. Fane, my boy, come over here and pick this lock. There's a torture room right next door. I don't think there's anything particularly useful in it. The Flensers Playground. Alright. Pick that lock. Ooh, yay. Some good stuff. Animal skins. Identify that sword. A staff. I'm going to send that to the Red Prince. And a really nice one-handed sword. Which has cleave damage, dual wielding, and strength. Strength not high enough. Oh, is that Bane's taking it. He's picking it up. <laughs> okay, no. I want this on this guy. Um... Hmm. Interesting. Do I dual wield now or later? Let's see, because this 11 to 14, 16 to 18, and then if I dual wield 23 to 26. That's generally how I play my character, so I'm going to do that. Oh, she can't pick that up because Constitution 11. Durr. Okay. I forgot that's one of the things I do is I give my summoner enough constitution points to keep using a shield. The Hound's Master's Crossbow does more damage and sets slowed for two turns. Okay, he's going to equip that for now. Because, here's my thought process. Let's see, he's going to equip this staff. Red Princes, because it does poison damage plus one to intelligence, which is great. 100 chance I don't care about the turn blood surfaces and clouds into poison, but set silence, that's nice. Mostly the plus one intelligence, so you want to equip that. And I don't need a spear anymore. I was using a spear because I had that small chance to petrify. Alright. Let's go have some fun, shall we? Oh, and there's this stuff over here. Niles notes. What a lovely little trip Dallas uncovered. Makes them so compliant, so willing. My playground has never been more flush with pleasures. She'll be glad for the advancements I've made. No one likes to play with a zombie after all. Modicum of will must remain. Or where's the fun? Oh, Niles. And then there's a drained wand. What is this? What is this? Yeah, good question. Alright. Niles! You bad man, you. This can be a little bit difficult. Alright, I'm going to save the game right here. This episode's almost half an hour long. Uh, come back on the next episode and we'll play around with Niles the Fencer. Alright, thanks folks for watching. As always, if you like the content, subscribe to the channel. And if you leave a comment or question, I will answer. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.